These are Russian soldiers on their way to loot and to kill. But their every move is caught on multiple cameras. And so is Leonid, the security guard, as he approaches them. The men talk, even smoke, and then the soldiers leave. But suddenly, two turn back. They shoot Leonid and a second man multiple times in their backs. Leonid somehow survives. His boss dead, the guard staggers back to his hut and starts phoning for help. I met one of the friends Leonid called that day. He told Vasya the soldiers claimed they don't kill civilians. Then they shot him. I asked how he was. I said, can you at least bandage yourself up? And he said, Vasya, I barely crawled here. Everything hurts so much. I feel really bad. So I told him to hang in there and started calling the territorial defense. The Russians drove a stolen van, daubed with their V symbol and the words Russian tank special forces. And this is the man we saw shooting, now helping himself to a drink. He has no idea he's being filmed. No one does, until it's too late. And all this time, Leonid is hiding in here, bleeding heavily. Weeks later, we found his clothes and mattress bundled up outside. He died before help could reach him. I met the men who tried to save Leonid. Sasha and Kostya, who sold air conditioning before the war. As they rushed to the scene that day, they tried to reassure Leonid that he'd make it, but they were scared themselves. We went there knowing the risk, under fire. We knew the Russians would come back and they had tanks, and we only had our guns, so our chances were not equal, but we had to go and get him. They show me how the nearby road looked in those days, with Russian tanks rolling past their positions. Police have told us the Russians shot at anything that moved here. They found the bodies of 37 civilians on just this stretch of road. It's not just the burnt out buildings and businesses along this road that you see, but things like this. Two Russian tanks just lodged in the forest and you can see the Vs painted on the front. And it's a, a really stark reminder of just how fierce the fighting was all along these roads into Kiev and how terrified Leonid must have been as he was lying there bleeding and calling for help. Leonid's daughter shared this image of her dad as she'd like him remembered. Yulia is abroad now. She tells me she wants her father's killers to face justice. My dad was not a military man at all. He was a pensioner. They killed a 65-year-old. What for? I'm not so much furious as full of grief and fear. These damn Russians are so out of control that I'm afraid of what they might do next. Leonid never returned to his home or his pets. Another life stolen by Russian troops, now notorious for their brutality. Sarah Rainsford, BBC News, Kiev.